What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. If you have not yet, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. For all latest Dodgers news, rumors, hype videos, interviews, podcasts, you're going to find it right here on the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. So hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, and give me all your takes down below in the comments section. How do you feel about the DJ LeMahieu rumors, the recent acquisitions by the Padres, the Blake Snell, the U Darvish move? How do you feel about the Dodgers' recent pickup today? Let me know down below in the comments. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So DJ LeMahieu, one of the most coveted bats available this offseason, he's been linked to the Dodgers once again. And here we go. And this time by David Vasse. Dave Vasse was quoted this morning on MLB Radio as saying, Andrew did say at the beginning of the winter that he would like to add a right-handed bat. And from what I'm hearing, DJ LeMahieu is on their radar. They are definitely in talks with LeMahieu. So you're a Dodger fan. You know how it works. They're always linked to the top free agents every single offseason. One, because they have the resources, they have the financial muscle to pay a player like a DJ LeMahieu. But if you're Andrew Freeman and the Dodgers, are you really willing to offer a nine-figure deal for a player that turns 33 in July? Yes, he's without question one of the best hitters in all of Major League Baseball. He's a two-time batting champ, three-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glove Award winner, but he's reportedly seeking a contract of four to five years at north of $100 million. And yes, the Dodgers have meticulously managed their payroll where their only committed money past 2022 is to Mookie Betts. So if the Dodgers really wanted D.J. LeMahieu, he could be had. They could front load that contract. They could offer him a shorter deal with more money. There's ways around it if they really wanted to find a way to make it happen. Now, when it comes to D.J. LeMahieu as a player, he's truly one of the elite hitters in all of Major League Baseball. His bat-to-ball skills are second to none. Last season, he had 364 in 195 at-bats, hit 10 home runs, but his biggest strength and where he could really help the Dodgers is that K percentage. Last season, he put up a 9.7% K percentage. That was second lowest in all of Major League Baseball. The lowest on the Dodgers was Justin Turner at 14.7%, and it's just really phenomenal what he's able to do with the stick. I've watched a lot of DJ LeMahieu. The guy has an uncanny ability to not go down swinging. That could really help this club, and yes, the Dodgers have had one of the most explosive lineups in all of Major League Baseball over the last few seasons, but when they go cold, it's usually because they're striking out, they're having issues making contact. So adding DJ LeMahieu would go a long way into solving that weakness. He would take an already great lineup and make them probably one of the best lineups in the history of Major League Baseball. Putting DJ LeMahieu there in the three hole, along with guys like Mookie Betts, Corey Seager, you legitimately have three MVP candidates at the top of your lineup year in and year out. And Mookie Betts has already won an MVP. And then, oh, in the four hole, it is going to be an odd year next year. What if Cody Bellinger starts hitting like an MVP again, then you have four MVP candidates in your lineup to start things off. So it's a very intriguing and appealing possibility if you're a Dodger fan. Will it ever materialize? I'm not so sure. Is DJ LeMahieu, is he using the Dodgers to leverage a contract offer from the Yankees? Yes, that's definitely possible. Are the Yankees sitting there saying, okay, go out there, see what you can get from the Mets, from the Dodgers, from the Toronto Blue Jays. And he's going to come back to the Yankees and the Yankees are simply going to say, okay, Okay, we'll match that or maybe we'll offer you a little more. Is that in play as well? I would say most likely. And that's why it's tough for me to get behind these DJ LeMahieu rumors is because I don't see the Dodgers outbidding the Yankees, the Mets, or the Toronto Blue Jays. Yes, I think there's a chance, but at his age, will the Dodgers be aggressively offering him a $100 million contract? With the way that Andrew Freeman has run this franchise since he's taken over, I just don't see that happening. But one thing to consider is last season in 2020, Major League Baseball lost a report 3.1 billion dollars. So is the market not as strong as they once anticipated? Is he looking at a potential higher AAV but lower term deal? Then I think the Dodgers consider jumping in. But even with all these teams out there crying poverty, I still believe he's going to find a way to get that 20 to 25 million dollars per year that he's looking for. And yes, I definitely think he's worth that. But there are some questions when it comes to DJ LeMahieu. The first one, I think, being his age. He will be 33 in July next year. And you have to wonder how much of his prime is 
left, and then two, those home road splits. For his career, he's hit 336 at home and 274 on the road, and that includes seven seasons playing in Colorado. And then last season, he hit 423 at home and 306 on the road. Now, one thing you want to consider, too, is those home runs. Last season, he put up 10 home runs, but over the course of his career in New York, where he really took off the last two years, he hit 36 total home runs, 27 of those bombs were in the Bronx. So 75% of his home runs were hit at Yankee Stadium. So is there an issue with his home road splits? Not really, but when it comes to those home runs, will that power translate to Dodger Stadium? That's something you want to consider when it comes to signing DJ LeMahieu. But I think the bottom line with DJ LeMahieu and the Dodgers, as far as fit goes, is he can give you gold glove caliber defense at three positions. First base, second base, and third base. And he hits for average. He hits for contact. And you don't need 25 to 30 home runs. The Dodgers already have so much power up and down that lineup that they would just want him to come in and do what he does best and make this a more dynamic Dodger offense. So the big question, will the Dodgers ultimately sign DJ LeMahieu? Me personally, I wouldn't bet on it, but I will say they're one of only a couple teams that are even considering it right now. And yes, there's a big difference between being in talks with a player and being in serious talks with a player. So we'll have to see. Will where these rumors go in the coming weeks? Will they gain any traction, any real momentum? But hey, let's dream for a second that he ends up in LA. How will that lineup look? Well, let's check it out. Okay, so let's take a look at this lineup right here. Now, this assumes two things. One, no DH in the National League. And two, they re-signed Justin Turner and signed DJ LeMahieu. So you'd have Mookie Betts there batting leadoff, followed by Corey Seager, then DJ LeMahieu there in the three-hole. So taking over for JT in the three-hole. And then I've got Cody Bellinger batting cleanup. Now, this is assuming that he's going to return to that MVP player that he was in 2019 or even gets close to it. So I'm okay with shuffling that part of the lineup there with Cody Bellinger, Max Muncy, but then after that you've got Justin Turner playing third batting in the five hole, Max Muncy in the six hole playing first, then in the left you got A.J. Pollock and Chris Taylor there in the seven hole then eighth I've got Will Smith there at catcher, I'm okay with having him higher in the order as well, and then in the pitcher spot of course you got the ace of the staff, Walker Buehler now, for this next lineup, it also assumes no DH in the National League next season. But in this scenario, the Dodgers sign DJ LeMahieu, but don't re-sign Justin Turner. You got Mookie Best leading off, Seager batting second, DJ LeMahieu there in the three-hole, Belly in the cleanup spot, Will Smith batting fifth. Without JT in the lineup, I like Will Smith higher in the order, followed by Max Muncy, A.J. Pollock, and Chris Taylor. Then you got Gavin Lux playing second with Chris Taylor there, splitting time a little bit. He'll get some reps there. I would like to see Gavin Lux get the lying share of the reps if they don't sign DJ LeMahieu. And then, of course, you got Walker Buehler, the ace of the staff. So, Bet Seeger, LeMahieu, Bellinger, Smith, Muncy, Pollock slash CT3, Gavin Lux slash CT3, and then the pitcher spot. So this last lineup, this could be the dream scenario. This would be the best Dodgers lineup in the history of the franchise and one of the best lineups in the history of Major League Baseball, in my opinion. And that's if you had the DH in the National League. You probably won't have it in 2021, but it's safe to assume that you'll see it in 2022. And they re-signed Justin Turner and they signed DJ LeMahieu. So you've got Mookie Betts leading off, followed by Corey Seager, DJ LeMahieu, Cody Bellinger hitting cleanup, and then you got JT hitting DH in the five hole, followed by Max Muncy batting sixth, Will Smith batting seventh, and then eighth, Gavin Lux, and then ninth, I got AJ Pollock and Chris Taylor. So that lineup would be flat out ridiculous. It'd be the Avengers out there for the Dodgers, just stacked from top to bottom. You got guys that can hit for power, guys that can hit for average. I think from the right side, Mookie Betts, he's going to hit for power. You got Will Smith, he's going to hit for power. It's just a ridiculous lineup if the Dodgers are able to put that together. And I don't care who the Padres are putting out there. I don't care if they're the 98 Braves. That offense is going to score runs against any stack in Major League Baseball. Now, will it happen? I'm not so sure. I don't anticipate the Dodgers signing both Justin Turner and DJ LeMahieu. We've seen crazier things happen, and we don't know how the market is going to look moving forward. But I'm telling you, that would be one of the most lethal lineups in the history of Major League Baseball. You'd be talking about the 2021 Dodgers along with teams like the Murders Row Yankees or the late 90s Indians, some of the best offenses in the history of the sport.
Kluber. Now, of course, a lot would have to happen for the Dodgers to get DJ LeMayhew. I wouldn't bet on it right now, but we'll be keeping a close eye on it. Now, a few more things to know before we head out of here. The Padres, they made their big moves, right? They traded for Blake Snell. Now you, Darvish. Well, the Dodgers, they traded for Garrett Clevenger. So take that, Padres. How's that for a blockbuster move? He's actually really interesting. He had a big velo spike after he had ACL surgery. So we'll see if he can help the Dodgers. They added him to that 40-man roster. He's actually worked with Connor McGinnis in the past. So we'll see how he'll develop in this Dodgers organization. But a couple more reminders before we head out. One, if you have not yet, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel for all the latest Dodgers news and rumors. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification button. And then give me all your takes down below in the comment section. Let me know if you think the Dodgers should sign DJ LeMahieu. Will they re-sign Justin Turner? Give me a Y for yes. Give me an N for no. And then head over to GearUp.LA for all the latest Dodgers Nation merch. You're going to find it right over there. T-shirts, hoodies, mugs, all kinds of stuff. I'm wearing my Death Row Dodgers shirt today. You'll find that over there. And me, my name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And for all the latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. And as always, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.